very, very confident about his ability to do whatever he wanted to do in the ring tonight. Well, that was his exact quote, Cambrell. He said, I can do anything I want in the ring, and a Vander Holyfield can't. Well, that, of course, to re remains to be seen. What impressed me about Holyfield in our discussions was that he felt boxing was very scientific. He got very involved, as, as you'll see later on when we profile Holyfield and the training that he underwent. It's 21st century kind of techniques. They're very involved with Team Holyfield, the kinds of people they have working with him. His whole approach to what he's doing in the ring, therefore, it takes on that scientific scientific connotation and he's very thoughtful uh, their plan is to try to get George Foreman to commit and throw punches as you'll see in our CompuBox statistics later on Foreman throws far fewer punches than Holyfield but every punch has a purpose so the Holyfield camp wants him to throw the punches and they want him to miss and they're working with Holyfield's flexibility Lou Duva told me this morning you'll see a lot of this this kind of approach that upper body flexibility so that's something you should look for with Holyfield later on tonight but in our discussions and throughout the press tour, George Foreman really has spoken in terms of 20-second sound bites that you hear on the 6 o'clock news. It's hard to get exactly inside his head. The easy way to put it is he's just going to fight one way straight ahead, come at you, and try to land some bombs. Certainly it won't be uh, very easy to forget the kind of greeting we received from George Foreman yesterday morning when we got a hold of him before breakfast. I think you'll remember that and know that that George Foreman seemed to recall the Foreman of the past, a surly kind of guy. But let me ask you this. Leading into this fight there's been a lot of speculation about whether this is a legitimate heavyweight championship matchup or whether it's a farce i think that as we've gotten closer to the fight we seem to have forgotten about that and getting caught up in the actual chances george foreman seems to have we seem to be caught up in a mystique of whether foreman can be able to win the fight when the fight was announced and throughout the comeback everyone said there's no way George Foreman can't do it. And now, as each week has gotten closer to this April 19th date, more and more people are saying, I believe in what George Foreman calls his professed miracle. You, you, some of the most respected sports writers in America now say, clear cut, Foreman will be the winner. You, you look at the betting that is legal in Las Vegas at the sports books, and virtually all the bets in the last couple of days, particularly at Caesars Palace, came down on the side of Foreman. Very few bets on Holyfield's side. So. As we get closer, more and more people believe. I only caution you that when Muhammad Ali fought Larry Holmes, the same kind of tendencies happened. And towards the end, a lot of people were behind Muhammad Ali for nostalgia's sake. All righty, Lynn, we'll be back to you in just a few moments. You know, it's our second bout of this evening. We're going to be looking at a young man. We're going to be concentrating on the heavyweights, as we mentioned earlier on. We're going to be looking at a young man who's already gained a great deal of attention for his relationship with John Wayne. He's a great grandnephew of John Wayne and for his role as a movie actor. He starred in Rocky V, and he's also established himself fairly well as a real life boxer. In the movie, his name was Tommy Gunn. Well, his real name is Tommy Morrison, and with a record of 26 and 0, you get the feeling that he too is thinking that one day he will be the heavyweight champion of the world. <laughs> Tonight, this legend's grandnephew fights for his own marquee status, not on the silver screen, but in the ring. Tommy, the Duke Morrison. Tommy Morrison has been a tough fighting Oklahoman since the age of seven. An all-state linebacker in high school, he walked away from scholarships to focus on boxing. Quickly powered his way to Golden Glove champion of Kansas City. Turning pro, this aspiring superstar appears to be an emerging smash. There's the left hand. Jay goes down and probably out. What a huge shot. Critics harpoon the 22-year-old for stepping in with journeyman. Despite his 26-0 record, they say he is untested and has been brought along too slowly. People need to understand I'm a young fighter. We've got a lot to learn. i got to get bigger, faster, stronger, but we're certainly on the right track. On that track, Morrison keeps hammering his rivals, hoping to convince those skeptics. A devoted student of the fight game, Morrison compares himself with some influential idols. I like the history of the sport. If you put Rocky Marciano and Floyd Patterson together, you'd have me. <laughs> I think that's me. Explosive power drives his perfect record. But like the real Duke, one of the keys to this Duke's success is promotion. 
fighting as Tommy Gunn in Rocky V generated more recognition for Morrison than his real life battles in the ring. I realize I don't come from the same streets as you do, man, but I'm hungry, like you were. I mean, fighting is all I got going in my life. In a previous Hollywood fantasy, Rocky took on the Russian menace Ivan Drago. Tonight, Morrison imitates art in his showdown with Yuri Vaulin, a great red Hulk who leads an invasion of newly turned pro Soviet boxers. Meanwhile, uh, Cannon oh. is close to the canvas here in the first. He's through. Right now, he's having that Yuri feeling. You will lose. Let's do it. But this is not Gunn versus Drago, and the showbiz bounce only goes so far. Morrison has had his scripted moment on the screen. Tonight, he portrays his real role in the ring. Now hopefully, life will imitate art. I won the championship in the movie, and, and that's what I'm looking to do in, in reality. Once again, it is fight time. Part two of TVKO's triple header, Tommy Morrison against Yuri Vaulin. And for the call of the action, let's go now to ringside to Lynn Berman and Joe Goosen. Lynn? Thank you very much, Cambrell Marshall. And Yuri Vaulin is already in the ring. He is a southpaw. He is a Soviet. And here's a look at Tommy Morrison. You know the face from Rocky V. And boxing people, Joe Goosen, know that he's got the equipment and the tools, but I think the acting role in the movie means now he has to prove himself even more. Well, it's caused a lot of confusion with the general public. They think he's Tommy Gunn, the actor, not uh, Tommy Morrison, the fighter. But let me tell you something. He's been fighting since age seven. He knows what he's doing. In fact, uh, if you saw the movie, he's a little bit better fighter than he is an actor, but not a bad actor. But, but he can fight. He's got a great left hook, and he's going to need it tonight because from what I understand, and I learned from him from going to one of his workouts, that he's got a badly injured right knuckle on his right hand. Uh-huh. All right, something to watch out for. Let's take a look at Goosen's corner, and let's start with Tommy Morrison. Joe? Well, he's got several keys to victory tonight, and Morrison, what he's got to do is he's got to apply a lot of pressure is the first thing he's got to do. He's got to slow uh, Vaulin's movement down, and he's got to keep uh, Vaulin moving to his left because that bad right hand, he's got to set him up on the left side, and then he's got to work that body. This guy's had 300 amateur fights, Vaulin, and he's a slick two-time European champion. He's got to slow this guy down and be able to bang him along the ropes and maybe take him out. Here is Yuri Vaulin, the southpaw, Soviet, a bit awkward, thinks he's been taken lightly. He's upset that Morrison is already looking forward to his next fight and past him. Lives in Yonkers, New York now after coming over from the Soviet Union. Joe, what's the Goose and Corner spotlight on him look like? Well, Vaulin, he's got to use that 6-4 height and reach advantage, uh, but he also has to stay off the ropes. Don't get trapped on the ropes. When Morrison's got you there, he usually finishes you there. And he's got to get respect by hitting Morrison with some of those good straight punches that he does throw. In fact, those are the two best things he does, left and a right, or a right and a left, I should say. And then he's got to finish his combinations. He's been criticized for not throwing enough punches, Len. Right. They say he throws one, two punches, and that's it, and he backs out. Stops, starts. Right. Stops, Tom, start. Not a fluid fighter. Right. Tommy Gallagher says he's got to get the respect of Morrison by stepping to the side once in a while and dropping a hard left hand on him and let him know that he can punch also. And Baloon's professional record, 10 and 1 with six knockouts, but that's misleading. He's had a couple of hundred amateur fights. He's 1987 European amateur champion. He's a World Cup champ. So he's had the European experience. But over here as a professional, just those 11 fights. And Tommy Morrison, the 22-year-old Arkansas native, lives in Kansas City, 26 and 0 with 22 knockouts. And he bristles at the suggestion that he's the next great white hope, as people like to say. One, he says it's a racist comment. And number two, he says, I don't want to be lumped with those other guys like Trevor Burbick and Jerry Cooney. Well, none of them really made it to the top. That's why he feels it's a jinx to be called the great white hope. I'll tell you, Morrison looks even bigger and stronger than he did Going back six to eight months ago, he learned how to diet real well from uh, working on that Rocky movie. He Stallone gave him a lot of diet tips. All right, and the tail of the tape for our heavyweight fight tonight. Aulan, five years older, two inches taller. Morrison has the weight advantage. Morrison's been a pro for two years. Aulan won, but as we've noted, both of them have had a lot of amateur experience. Mm -hmm. 
And let's call on our Nevada State judge, Cindy Barton. What are the rules for this fight, Cindy? Well, Lynn, we're New Jersey State rules again for a 10-round fight. It's a 10-point must system. Referee does not score the fight. Standing eight count is in effect. The three knockdown rule is in effect. The bell cannot save the fighter in any round, including the 10th, and the doctor can stop the fight. All right, so it's time for the introductions of the fighters. Let's go to our ring announcer, Michael Buffer. Ladies and gentlemen, this bout is scheduled for 10 rounds. It's in the heavyweight division, and the referee for this contest is Steve Smoker. Introducing first, fighting out of the blue corner, he's wearing the red trunks and weighs an even 209 pounds. His professional record, 10 victories with six KOs, only one defeat. He's originally from the USSR, now fighting out of Yonkers in New York. Ladies and gentlemen, let's welcome Yuri Vaulin. And, and fighting out of the red corner, wearing the black trunks with red, white, and blue trim. He weighs an even 223 pounds, undefeated with a record of 26 and 0, 22 KOs. From Kansas City, ladies and gentlemen, he's one of the top ranked heavyweights in the world today, Tommy the Duke Morrison. No, hey, hey, yo. He comes out. He comes out. You got an interpreter? Let him come out. Come on. You want to come out? Come out. Oh, you were giving her. Good. You were giving your instructions at the weigh-in. Obey my commands at all times. Obey the bell at all times. And protect yourself at all times. I'll touch him up, but we don't go touch him. Very good. Let's roll. Joe Vaulin is one of uh, several Soviet fighters that was brought over by uh, Lou Falcino. Is there a right. common thread that runs among them? Well, actually, uh, he's uh, uh, he's one of the few uh, of the uh, Soviet fighters that uh, are still around. They sent a couple of them back. I think they uh, they kept one of them, and I wouldn't even dare to pronounce his name right now. But it's a lot harder than Vaulin. And Vaulin bounced right into the ring. This has been set up as one of those Rocky Four versus Rocky Five fights. A uh, few of the Soviet fighters had a hard time adapting to the American pro style. You know, they have so many fights over there. They get uh, in a groove to fight one way, and it's almost impossible to break into that habit. And that's what Tommy Gallagher said he was having a problem with Baula. Morrison just trying to check him out and see what he could do. Well, Baulin's moving the way that Tommy Gallagher didn't want him to move, and that's to his right. He wanted... Uh, Baulin to move to his left to stay away from that big, big left hook of uh, Morrison. And Morrison slipped down. Referee Steve Smoker. Opening round is scheduled for 10. Morrison's aggressiveness. Well, Owen took that shot real well. It hit him uh, on top of the head, but it still landed very solidly and uh, didn't seem to affect him in the least. Morrison had told us uh, you see him dipping down. He wants to work the body a bit, but uh, hasn't done it yet. Morrison doing some damage with both hands. Roundhouse right glances off the head of Vaulin. Tommy Gallagher, uh, Vaulin's trainer, told me he wants him nowhere near those ropes. He's got to stay in the center of that ring and use that jab. And as a matter of fact, he's got a beautiful jab. It comes out straight, comes out fast and hard. But he hasn't done much uh, other than throw that jab. Vaulin hasn't. That's the punch again! He 
You hear Gallagher screaming for him to throw that left hand. He thinks that Morrison's open for it, and uh, Raul isn't punch, responding. In the final seconds of this first round of the heavyweight fight, Tommy Morrison and Yuri Vaulin from Latvia. No, 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 no. Tommy Morrison show. You know, you, you can't really hear too much in the corner right now, but I got to assume that Morrison's corner is telling him to stop following him around and cut off that ring and hit the body more. It's something that he said he was going to do, and he hasn't. Of course, on the, uh, we're a little bit closer to Vaulin's corner. And they are speaking English. Vaulin doesn't speak much of it, but understands a little bit. Tommy Gallagher, Vaulin's trainer, urging him to throw that left hand, but it was a it was a nicely fought round for Vaulin. Round two. Well, the CompuBank uh, stat on the uh, jab thrown in round one was 33% uh, landed by Vaulin and 17% uh, landed by Morrison. Of course, he only threw 12 jabs. There goes that left hand that they were asking for, and he's landing it. Baulun getting some punches in there. There's Morrison headhunting again. He should be hitting that body at every opportunity. Morrison swinging and hitting air. Well, this kid's an elusive uh, uh, target, this Baulun. And uh, his head, he leans back. He's tall. He should be hitting that body. It's the closest thing to him. Morrison landing a right. Big roar through the crowd moments ago with the arrival of Muhammad Ali at ringside. Another straight hard left jab or right jab landed by Baul. Morris is starting to look puffy already and it's only been around and a half. Well, they said they expected the fight to be difficult, that Baulun was awkward. They wanted to get Morris in some rounds. They had already looked ahead and tried to book Ray Mercer for August. Well, they might have been putting the uh, ooh, left for Morrison. Putting the card ahead of the horse. Uh, from uh, this point of view right now, uh, Baul is not doing too badly. He's holding his own right now. A lot of people thought this fight was going to end real early. Work out of there, work out of there. No break, don't worry. Keep moving, keep moving. A little blood around the mouth of Morrison. Well, he's taking several jabs right off the chin and uh, that opened him up rather early. Hands up, hands he's up. certainly in a dogfight here against the Russian fighter. Again! Again! I'm here, I'm here. Step, step. Well, it looks like they've been working on uh, Vaulin's killer instincts here. Tommy Gallagher said he had a hard time getting him to really open up on his opponent. And here he looks like he means business tonight. He doesn't want to just win. He wants to do some damage tonight. Look at that. Putting a three-punch combination and getting out. This is what he got to do all night to win the fight. Vaulin in good shape, dancing away. We wind down towards the end of the second round. Right hand from Morrison. Well, you know, Bill Caton, uh, Tommy Morrison's manager, told me they might have made a mistake taking this fight because uh, of the awkwardness of this southpaw, and unfortunately, it's turning it's turning out to be true. And there's a champion. There's a live picture from his dressing area. His trainer, Lou Duva, right behind him. man who has somewhat been overlooked in the promotion, even though he is the undisputed world heavyweight champion. George Foreman has garnered all of the attention and a good deal of the support. Yeah. 
And of course, coming up, we will have what's being billed as the Battle of the Ages. 42-year-old George Foreman, 28-year-old Evander Holyfield. But first, there's the business of Tommy Morrison and Yuri Vaulin. Round three, it's scheduled for 10. Well, the jab seems to be the uh, deciding factor in this fight so far. Uh, Vaulin landing 32% to Morrison's 9%. He's only thrown 22. He's been throwing wild and uh, trying to headhunt, and it's not uh, it's not serving him very well in this fight. And the longer Morrison goes, he treads into unfamiliar waters because most of his fights have, la uh, have ended in the first couple of rounds, Joe. Especially his last few fights. Uh, he fought uh, Piglin Thomas, knocked him out in one. Quick and, Tillis. Uh, James Quick Tillis. What has he had, about 20 uh, knockouts in his last 22 fights, I mm -hmm. believe. And, uh, and all early. Exactly. All in the first couple of rounds. Well, Tommy Gallagher telling uh, Vaulin to move, and the one time he didn't, he got caught with a left hook to the head. And that's what he's got to do, use that mobility and get out of the way of these big bombs. You mentioned something that uh, nobody knew, Joe, that uh, uh, Marson has an injured right hand. Do you think that's telling a tale? Well, you know, uh, he did. He had a severely injured knuckle, and in confidence, he showed it to me. And uh, I didn't say anything before the fight, but now that it's going on, it won't make a bit of difference. But uh, he really hasn't been throwing it that much. And he's, uh, I've seen him knock out quite a few guys with that right hand. But right now, he's limited. He hasn't been throwing very much at all. It may be bothering him. You see, he didn't follow up with that left hook. He should have thrown that right uppercut right into the midsection after that. In fact, he doubled over in pain and fell to the canvas during sparring when he hit his sparring partner, Jerry Jones. Oh, and Von Ullen landing. He staggered Morrison. Boy, Morrison yeah. has never been down in his career, and he wobbled there. Well, He's got to stick to his game plan here, Vowell, and he shouldn't get overly confident because Tommy is still strong, even though he wobbled him. But this is the point where Tommy Gallagher said Vaula needed to go in, go after him now. Don't let him off the hook. Well, Don't let him back in the fight. He's in, but he's holding on. He should stay to the outside. He's landing from the outside. White quit there. He exactly lands again like with a left. Vaula putting on a show in the third round. Putting on a show and, and, and catapulting himself to the top of the heavyweight division. If he takes out Morrison, he's rated in the top ten in all three uh, categories here. And Morrison landed a left, but after paying the price. Morrison cannot just be content to throw those punches and stop. He's got to pull, throw those punches and step to the side. Get out of harm's way there. Don't be in line for a counter shot from Morrison. No punch, no punch, no punch. Punch, punch. A strong round for the underdog, Yuri Vaulin, who's taken over control of this fight through three. Here on the replay, you see uh, Vaulin landing that jab. Bingo, right on the button with that left hand, and then followed up with that right hook to the temple. And that's that'll do a lot of damage in itself. Here again, another angle of that. And left hook right on the chin, followed by a left, and another left. A beautiful three-punch combination set up by the jab. It's the overhead shot. Steps in, right cross, left hand, right cross. It's amazing that uh, Tommy Morrison really stood up to those three shots. That would have put any... Uh, normal man down. Look at this. Turned his head completely around. I was looking at the same combination that Buster Douglas hit Mike Tyson with to put him out and down. Mm. He won't be able to take many more of these combinations uh, if he doesn't do something to turn this tide in this fight. Big third round for Yuri Vaul and let's see how Morrison can respond here in the fourth. Lunged with a right from long distance as the crowd reacted to. Well, it hit Vaul and right on the chin and uh, well, he came right back with his own two punches, but it looked like it uh, it stunned him for a second. Me, me, right? Come on. You know, Vaulin told us yesterday that he, de he depends on this right jab. That, that really is his bread and butter punch. Come on, come on, Yuri. Come on, Yuri. I'm here, I'm here, 
A left caught Baulun going backwards. Baulun has taken Tommy Morrison out of his game plan here. When Baulun does get on the inside, he's allowing, uh, when Morrison gets on the inside, he's allowing Baulun to tie him up on the inside. He should forget about trying to push him off. He should be banging him to the body, trying to wear him down and slow him down. He's, he isn't getting many opportunities to hit him. So take advantage of it on the inside. Another one, two, landed right on top of the head. By Baulun. Punch out of there, Tom. Referee Put Steve Smoger there, telling Tommy Morrison to punch his way out of there, out of the clinches. Morrison had said something to Smoger. I'll let you work out of here. Go ahead. That's the voice you hear. All right, hold on. Walk him now. Don't punch. Don't punch. Tommy, don't punch. Tommy. And a left hand from Baulin. Like your hands are loose. That's it. Push. Morrison finally going to the body. If he were doing that more consistently, it would definitely be taking uh, the legs away from Baul. That had been the game plan. They wanted Morrison to come in low to be explosive. Don't punch, don't punch. All right, good. Break, don't punch. Baul's corner is urging him to jab. The pace has slowed down a lot here uh, in this round, but they they certainly expended a lot of energy in these first uh, uh, four rounds uh, uh, for heavyweights. A lot more clutching and grabbing here in the fourth. Oh, dynamite! Baulin with another fine combination. I'll tell you what, Tommy Morrison is really uh, uh, unsteady on his feet. His uh, his ankles are turning. His his legs look weak underneath him right now, man. Another pretty good round for Yuri Vaulin. So maybe his people were right all along when they said, don't take us lightly. Don't look ahead to your next fight. Take a look at us. And let's check in with Cindy Barton to see how she has scored it through four rounds. Cindy? Well, Len, I have Vaulin winning 39 to 37. He's applying the pressure. He's controlling the fight. And uh, I think it's pretty clear cut at this point. Are you very surprised by this, Joe? Well, you had to favor Morrison going into this fight, but Tommy Gallagher told us that uh, Baulin was going to surprise everybody. He was, he was confident uh, as you could be that Baulin was in this fight. Uh, people were kind of writing him off going into this, but you look across the ring, you see Morrison. He looks like he was the underdog in this fight because he is getting banged up looking. Yeah, you know, the rap on the Soviet fighters is they're more headhunters than tacticians, but. Uh, Yuri Baulin certainly uh, being Boy, very tactical tonight. He, he certainly is. Uh, Tommy Gallagher in the corner told him to jab, move, jab, move. He knows the other punches will follow. He just doesn't want him standing still until Tommy Morrison is almost out or completely tired. Because he's still dangerous. Get off his neck, Yuri. No, no. Push. Push. And now Morrison on the attack. Morrison missing wildly on that one, but for the first time, he stunned Baulin. Well, just like I said, he was still dangerous, and and he's got him rocked. Let me tell you, and Gallagher was worried about that. Dynamite uppercut. And the crowd clearly on Morrison's side, as you can tell, as he's come alive here in round number five. Well, this is something uncharacteristic of uh, Baulin, and that's slugging it out with a guy like Tommy Morrison. We haven't seen this in his previous fights. Work out of it. You're loose. You're loose. It was Baulin's fight through the first four, and Morrison still oh. tied with a big left hand. I'm here. I'm here. I'm here. And Baulin's hurt. Body shot. That's it. They may stop the fight here. Doesn't look like he can continue. He Five, looks like that shot took six, everything out of him. Seven, eight, okay. Yeah. Gallagher okay. telling him not to quit, and he doesn't. But he sure on. looked on the verge of it. Break, 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 break
step. Oh, and Val Olin hurt again. Turn his back. That's got to be it. A fighter One, turns his back. I can't two, believe that Smolder is actually three, letting him get away with this. Four. That's it. That's, that's it. it. That's it. Tommy Morrison, who was in trouble and rocked in the fourth round but did not go down, ends it in the fifth. Well, he finally decided his corner had to have told him to go back downstairs or finally go downstairs because he didn't do it in the first four rounds. And that's what turned the turned the tide for him. 206 of the fifth. 206. Well, 206 of the fifth round. That'll be the official time. And Tommy Morrison goes to 27 and 0. 206 to the fifth. At their Olin. That really hurt Morrison in the fourth. All right, this is round number five now as we take a look at the replay. Left to the head. Morrison jumping strong, solid left. What a rocket. That's where he first got Vaulin in trouble. And it was the body shots which made him take the first count. And the second count was also from the body shot. And then the, the fight was stopped as well. But this is what started it. And this is the second time around. You see Baul immediately react and turn around. He had done it once early in the round, and here the second time. And referee Steve Smoger goes over and starts the count and eventually stopped it. Olin low. That's what they wanted him to do. They wanted him to be low, explosive, work the body, and that's exactly what he did to take out Yuri Vaulin in the fifth round. Quite a performance by Tommy Morrison. So now he can look ahead perhaps to Ray Mercer in a battle of undefeated young heavyweights in August. Let's go to the official decision. Michael Buffer up in the ring. Ladies and gentlemen, referee Steve Smoger stops this contest at two minutes and six seconds of the fifth round. The winner by TKO victory, his record now 27 and 0 with 23 KOs from Kansas City, Tommy the Duke Morris. Let's have a round of applause for a very, very game. Yuri Bauli from Yonkers, New York, by way of the Soviet Union. Let's give him a hand. All right, the final CompuBox statistics the number of punches thrown, Bauli. Way more than Tommy Morrison. Morrison's percentage just a little bit better, but you saw the big left hand to the head that started the problems for Baulin, and then it was the succession of body shots that led to the stoppage at 206 of the fifth round. And Joe Goosen's in the ring right now with Tommy Morrison. Joe, take it away. Thank you, Len. Listen, I got Tommy. Uh, Tommy, your worst nightmare almost came true tonight. Those southpaws, you told me you don't like them, you have trouble with them, and uh, it took you a few rounds before you got on track. That's true. I don't think uh, I'm, I'm the only one that doesn't like them. I mean, everybody had, you know, southpaws have a reputation of being very awkward and unorthodox, and uh, it proved to be true tonight. Uh, fortunately, I think conditioning played a, a major factor, and we're able to uh, you go to the body, which is something I should have done a hell of a lot sooner. But, uh, you know, things don't always happen the way they should. But fortunately, uh, my trainer and the condition that was in was able to come out on top. Was uh, was it your corner man who told you to finally go to the body, or was it a decision you made on your own? Well, going to the body is something that I normally do, uh, you know, just about every time I go to the head almost. The first 30 seconds of the first round, usually. <laughs> and that's why we've been successful in the past with the body shots. But I'd like to say hello to everybody back in Kansas City and Oklahoma. I'd like to wish my dentist, Bill Bush, happy birthday. Uh, listen, uh, Tom, let me ask you something. We know that uh, before the fight you told me, I saw that right knuckle was hurt badly. How did it affect you tonight? Did it have any uh, play in you not throwing uh, it as was, much? Uh, there, there was a little bit of pain there, but you know, as, you, as we all know, anybody that's very knowledgeable about the sport of boxing, uh, when you have the drilling, it certainly does uh, a lot for you. So we're, we're fortunate enough to throw it. The left hook uh, is basically what did it for us. Uh, unfortunately, uh, it didn't happen a lot sooner. Well, well, I feel that we learned a lot from this fight. Exactly. Bill, listen, uh, your worst nightmare almost came true like you told me you were worried about this fight. I was worried about that because of the southpaw problem. Ordinarily, the first punch that is usually thrown by Tommy is a left hook to the body. 
and here it took him five rounds to throw his first real effective left hook. Were you surprised by Valin? <laughs> Were you surprised by uh, maybe the, the couple left hands that he landed on you? Shook you a little bit? Uh, I was very surprised at his speed. I know they had very fast hands, but it seemed like it was even multiplied once we were in here. Very, uh, very accurate and knew his range very well, as most southpaws do. I think because that southpaw position kind of threw, obviously it throws everything off, not able to do what you normally can against an orthodox fighter. But, uh, you know, God was with us. We came out on top. Well, you look great tonight when you finished up strong. Yeah. Bill, let me ask you something. What about the future for Tom? What's he got going on? Well, we're going to probably fight Mercer in August. That's our plan at this time. And uh, if you get by Mercer, what's next? We'll see what the future pairs. Exactly. Well, I think he's got a great future for uh, Tommy uh, Morrison here. Great fight, Tommy. Thank Congratulations. You know, I'd like to thank uh, Top Ring and Man Events for having us here. All right. And thank you very much. And back to Len Berman ringside. All right. Thank you, Joe. Uh, let's take him one fight at a time. And uh, Mercer in August is the is the next probability in a battle of young undefeated heavyweights. And uh, a bit of uh, life imitating art. Uh, Tommy Morrison in that street brawl in Rocky Five and got into quite a brawl here, uh, getting rocked in the fourth round and winning it in the fifth. Let's go back up into the ring now to Joe Goosen. Thank you, Len. I've got uh, Yuri Vaulin here with me. Yuri, you almost had that fight in the bag. You had him hurt several times. Unfortunately, you couldn't finish him off. What happened? I received a strong punch in my stomach. I'm so sorry. This was my fight. Well, uh, let me ask you something. Uh, uh, when you were in training and you uh, you prepared for this fight, I'm sure you had sparring partners that hit you in the stomach. Was it a case that he just hit a lot harder than anybody else you've ever fought before? Uh, on one training, I received punch in my stomach. I just uh, no control. If I work with my stomach, I can receive today two punch more. Usually, I control his hands because he have good hook. I control all times these hands in my chin. <laughs> right. Mistake. Let me ask you something, Yuri. You had him hurt a couple times in the early rounds. Did you have a problem trying to, did you try to finish him off, or was it a, a fact that he just survived your attack? When I find his chin, I'm very hurry up. It's a little bit sink if I his free place. So you, you tried to take him out, you just couldn't do it? I'm uh, hurry up, finish this fight. This is my mistake. All right, Yurley. And, and how about the future? Are you going to continue? Uh, uh, do you foresee yourself continuing the heavyweight division? Uh, I must uh, uh, teach this uh, mistake. Teach me now. No more this mistake. All right, in other words, you've got to work on the fact that if you get hit in the body anymore, you've got to be able to absorb that punishment. Yeah, my time, my trainer Tommy uh, usually t say me, Yuri, work million push-ups on your body. I don't listen to him, so no, sorry. He, he listened. We had the best sparring possible. We had Seamus McDonough and Derek Eisman, who punched just as hard as Morrison, punching him to the body for three weeks up in Kutcher's. And this guy I'm, has the fight. We're right there. We're, we're a whisker away. And, and he got hit in the body. It's he, a shame. It certainly is a shame. And uh, back to you, Len Ringside. All right. Thank you, Joe Goosen. And, uh, Yuri Vaulin trying to apologize for what he perceives to be mistakes and Tommy Gallagher uh, may have very well have been a, a function of the type of thing we talked about earlier where Vaulin had a guy in trouble and well he never did finish it off didn't have that killer instinct. Let's take another look at that fifth round from our handheld camera up on the apron and ring apron here. All right, this is the look at him, Tommy. Push out. inside look of the fifth round. Now, remember, Vaulin had come on strong in the fourth. And he had rocked him. And now we had said at the time, let's see how Morrison can respond. And he certainly showed us all. That was the left hand that started it that we replayed several times. Now keep your eye out for the body shots. And the good right hand for Morrison. Keep your eye out for the first hard body shot that Baloon called my mistake. Baloon trying to load up against Morrison there. Work out of it. You're loose. You're loose. 
Well, this is the round that Morrison finally decided to go to the body, and what a payoff it had for him. Well, he had, oh, Another oh, strong left to the, the head. Right. The, the now, usually one. they say you start low and chop them down and then finish off high. Well, Morrison went the reverse route. Started with a couple of strong lefts to the head, and then the body shots. There it is, right in the liver there. It looked like Baulin wanted to quit. Smoker gave him two chances, though. He, he wanted to see if the kid could continue, but unfortunately he couldn't. Six. Yeah, Tommy Morrison said he, okay, he really, okay. uh, he, his strategy was in reverse tonight. Normally he goes to the body first, then to the head, but, uh, you know, those southpaws do pose a big, big problem for right-handers. I hate, you know, any fighter I have in the gym, my brother comes to me and says, hey, we've got a southpaw for you to fight. I say, why? Please, don't do that to us. Well, he saw the other left of the body there that ended the fight at two minutes and six seconds of the fifth round. All right. Well, he did give Morrison problems for about four rounds or so, but uh, the body shots paid off for him. In the end. Interesting to hear him say, I'm sorry and apologizing and my mistake, and uh, Tommy Gallagher trying to cover for him. Yeah, well, you know, he's uh, he's become real Americanized here, and I think he wants to please the American fans. Uh, uh, he loves it here, and uh, I think uh, he feels he didn't give the uh, performance he, he might have had he been in better condition, but... Uh, that's the break. Well, he said he'll learn from his mistakes. I mean, you, you've already uh, articulated how a couple of the Russian fighters who came over with him have already gone back home, and I think you were fishing for exactly. perhaps that response. Exactly. Is that it? Are you going to throw up your exactly. hands? Exactly. I wanted to find out whether or not he was going to follow the other guys back to the uh, Soviet Union, but he wants to rectify matters, and, uh, and I think he could do well in this division. He's a heck of a fighter. Mm -hmm. A lot of good movement and good punches. Now, what does this do for Tommy Morrison? Because we said he had to gain some extra respect. How about his getting hurt in the fourth round there and then uh, winning in the fifth? What, is, what does that all mean to him? Well, it uh, it shows that he's not invincible, number one. And it also shows that uh, he did take some several good shots and came back hard. And you like to see that good fighting heart and that good fighting instinct. And uh, it shows that he can overcome adversity. you got to like it. It's a learning experience. Well, coming up, we'll have our main event, Holyfield versus Foreman. But right now, let's go back to our host, Cambrell Marshall, for another TVK 